Kodak Retina 1B camera. This one's got multiple problems. You can move the film advance. No action from the shutter at all. Interestingly, I can depress the shutter release. Normally, that action would be blocked. So there's something odd going on there. Something disconnected, I would say. No action here, the curved rack. Oh, it's just made a slight movement there. It's getting nothing out of that before. So certainly something odd going on there. And it's got another issue. It won't close. There's a hard stop there, something stopping it from moving. So, certainly a camera with issues. I'm looking in there now, and I can pretty much tell you what's happened. Someone has removed the top of the camera, they've allowed the shutter release shaft to fall out. Or they've lifted it out, one or the other, and there's a small finger that runs on the shaft down in here and that's fallen in. So it's fallen into the space between the lens shroud and the bellows and of course it's not going to fall back out um, and that's what's blocking the action here. So the whole front of the camera can't fold because this piece of metal is loose inside there and it's loose inside because some bright spark has lifted the top off the camera, tipped the camera upside down, allowing the shutter to uh, the shutter release shaft to fall out. I can see here these two screws are loose, and they're also slightly scarred from someone using a bad screwdriver. And by bad, I mean one that doesn't fit the screw head particularly well. So I can tell someone had had the top off the camera. Any guesses as to why they'd had the top off the camera? Well, let's have a look. The cocking rack here is just touching the gear at this end. The screw here is loose, so someone's had that off. That rack is not connecting with that gear correctly at all. The tooth on this gear here is damaged. It's bent out of shape. So that gear is damaged. The rack looks damaged. It looks swept out in the middle like the teeth have been worn at that point. So, multiple issues, eh? Yeah, somebody's had that out and allowed that piece to fall inside. So I'm going to have to dig. Well, I'm going to have to strip the camera down anyway. But it's interesting to know that that was the case. That gear's damaged. Probably the rack is damaged too. It's fairly unusual for that gear to get damaged, to tell the truth. Looking at the angle of that damaged tooth, I would say that the gear was pushed, that the mechanism was pushed backwards. Someone had pushed in the uh, film advance. This screw is quite damaged. In fact, is it even the right one? I'm checking to see that I've got the chrome plated screw on the outside of the camera. Yes, I think I do. Sometimes it's difficult to spot the chrome plated ones from the nickel plated ones unless you've got them side by side chrome plated ones are to the blue end of the spectrum nickel plated ones are to the yellow end of the spectrum there's not much to pick in, in this particular lighting for that 
got no daylight coming here today. It's a very dirty day. Oh, this guide post here is loose. In fact, it might even be stripped out. No, that's all right. Just not engaging the tool. Let's get that screw out of there. Lift out the rack, and I'll have a look at that. Yeah, it's buggered. The teeth are completely mutilated on the, the center of the rack. That's why that wasn't cocking. Did that condition predate this problem? Most likely. Somebody has had the camera apart for a reason. It might have been that they'd taken it apart incorrectly and they'd taken apart parts of the camera that weren't going to help them to a solution but somebody certainly wanted to take the top off the camera for some purpose. Very likely because the camera wouldn't cock correctly and very likely the camera wouldn't cock correctly because the cocking rack was damaged. I'll just remove the shutter and lens assembly see if I can get that shim off in one piece, that's good. I want to remove the door, I think. Oh, we can probably just jump in from the front of the focus mount here. This piece, this bracket that's mounted to the inner helical, has this tag on the end of it, and that catches a screw. These screws are all loose, by the way. These have been, and I doubt they've been loosened by the owner because they probably didn't have a tool to get in that far. The screws have probably just rattled loose. I'm going to mark the uh, focus helical so I can put it back together at the, the right point. Normally I do this when I can by making sure that the inner and outer helical are at the same height, same level. And then scribe a couple of lines across here. Cut from the outer helical, inner helical and the uh, focus scale ring. And usually one across the top. And that means I can put my focus scale ring back in the correct position on the outer helical. And it means that I know that when I disassemble the inner and outer helical, that when they are reassembled and the front faces are level, these lines will line up. So if the focus was correct before you take the camera apart, as long as everything lines up correctly, when you put the camera back together, the focus will still be correct. There'll be no need for an adjustment to be made. Right, the focus scale ring can come off. Four black screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. And four screws here the rounded headed nickel plated screws hold the focus mount onto the front standard. If I loosen those four off I should be able to lift the focus mount off completely like that. And if I 
push the, the bellows are often stuck back to the front standard and somewhere in this space I should find that missing piece if it will come out Is that it there? I can't immediately see that. Oh, there it is, wedged up in the top of the camera. Now, would that be possible to put that back without disassembling the camera further? Possibly, but it'd be very difficult, that sort of keyhole surgery stuff that I certainly wouldn't want to get involved in that fight. It's much more easier to do it in the traditional way of opening the camera right up which I'm going to have to do anyway for servicing and putting it back. That piece of leather it came off quite well. Two screws here which are loose I notice hold the back catch cover in place. This has been off before, that's not the original adhesive I'm seeing there. I'm going to put a drop of solvent on there, I'll never get those screws loose. Well that did the job. I just put a drop of naphtha on those screw heads to soften that old adhesive it's effectively just sticking them in place see if I can get these screws to come out screw slots are just clogged with um, hard dry glue making it difficult to unscrew them. That's our film advance off. The leatherette. Is that going to come off nicely? Let's find out. Oh, it's looking promising. The leatherette here is quite pliable, that is by no means the norm. Sometimes it's very dry and brittle, and usually it's somewhere in between. It's common for the leatherette to be glued more firmly to the aluminium body than it is to the chrome brass trim. And the aluminium body shows through in an area through here. So it's often easier to lift the edges than it is to get it lifted off across the centre.
see the scalp will cut through the surface of the leatherette at that point. That'll disappear once it's glued back down. That's it. That's the leatherette off. Looks a little bit gummy. Let's have the hinge pin out of the door. There's usually a washer, sometimes two here, spaces. They stop the door from rattling. That's good. Now, here's two screws at the top here. Two at the bottom. These are usually quite tight. You've only got one tight one today by the looks of it. Let's put a little drop of solvent on there. It may help me loosen that up. To get another screwdriver onto that one. That was very stiff. Hmm. Slide out the whole front section here, the shroud. And this, this, this piece that had fallen in, it should have sat in here. And then the shutter release shaft would come in from the top. And you can see that the shutter release shaft would act upon this part, which would then act upon this part which would then depress the release, shutter release on the shutter itself. So, what can we say? Well, almost certainly the shutter cocking rack had failed. Uh, and someone has investigated that, lifted the top off the camera, tipped the camera upside down whereupon the shutter release shaft fell out leaving this piece vulnerable now if you see if you, see, if you extend the front you don't need to do much to release that and it would fall into this space here which is exactly what it did it fell into the space around the bellows because it's been in there a, um, an unexpected lump of metal I'm going to have to check those bellows fairly closely to make sure that they haven't been damaged. But that's the reason the front of the camera couldn't close. Because this piece here had fallen out of place. And it had fallen out of place because somebody either intentionally or unintentionally had lifted out the shutter release shaft. It's easily done while you're servicing the camera. And it uh, usually provokes lots of swearing when it does happen because it often happens very late in the piece of reassembly 
and you have to strip the camera back down to this level in order to put things back in place. Sometimes this piece may fall slightly out of place, out of position, it might jam in a position like this. You may be able to rescue that if you are very lucky, if you knew what had happened and you were pretty good at keyhole surgery because you would be working Let's see if we can get this back in here. Remember the door is on too, so you'd be working in a very small space here trying to get that back in position. I'm assured it can be done, I'm just not a patient man and uh, that's not the way I'd approach it. I'd just strip the damn, the damn thing down, do the job once, do it properly and then move on I promise myself never to do it again until next time so so far so good all the rest of it looks pretty straightforward this gear here looks to have one damaged tooth at this point I'll inspect that closely it's on a squared shaft of course at the top roughly two-thirds of that shaft that gear it gets used at any given time it doesn't rotate in a circle so what I'll do is I'll most likely just rotate that gear to make sure that all the good teeth are presented to the shutter cocking rack and the shutter cocking rack itself is going to need to be replaced that this is absolutely buggered The bottom of the rack looks fine, the top of the rack here, that's just swept out. It's like it's been swept right through there. And the, uh, presumably the gear teeth have just cut that away. So there we have it, that's a Retina 1B. Um, unusual problems, but uh, not that unusual for me to see unfortunately. I'll continue and strip all the parts down from this camera, clean them, reassemble them. I think I'm waiting for shutter cocking racks to arrive. Uh, so the camera may sit waiting at that stage for a new rack to be fitted. I'll check carefully, I might just possibly still have one in stock. Well, I'll carry on stripping this camera down. In the uh, last couple of minutes I was had the opportunity to check my uh, spare parts and I was able to confirm that I don't have any shutter cocking racks in stock so this camera will certainly be waiting until some arrive in the mail. I used to have a, st a stock of uh, Kodak original spare parts shutter cocking racks but that stock is now depleted it's gone so we'll just remove these four screws that held the bellows to the back of the front standard and four screws that held the focus mount to the front standard. Now there are four screws left here that hold the retainer here in place. The retainer holds the inner and outer helical in place. That screw was loose, that's an unusual thing. There's a mixed mixture on this camera, some screws are loose, other screws are tight as you would expect. Loose screws I think is most, the reason for loose screws is most likely temperature cycling and uh, vibration are probably the biggest factors involved in that. This is quite sticky with uh, dried out grease um, by no means a problem with this particular camera. Cameras that have um, that lack a rangefinder 
you typically look down and set your focus manually before you take your photo. You don't set the focus while you're holding the camera to your eye. And as a result, if the focus scale is a little bit stiff, it causes you no particular problem. Um, it can sometimes even be an advantage because it means that you won't accidentally knock the setting of the focus scale ring as you lift the camera up to take a photo. I'll just take that viewfinder off there. Cameras with a range finder however, you are focusing with the camera held up to your eye and so in that case it is certainly to your advantage if the focus scale ring moves smoothly and easily. Let's take the screw off the top of here. This is the film release shaft. It's designed to release the film advance lever so that you can wind on for the next shot after you've taken a photo. I'll just take this clip off the top of this shaft. This shaft is the lock lever. I'll remove its spring. And the lock lever's job is to lock the film advance when it reaches frame number one. Which is a common feature on many retina cameras. You know, just apply some acetone here to that paint on the top of that gear. Soften that up and see if I can unscrew it. I can certainly turn it. Let's see if I can pull the lock lever up into position. And there we go. These parts I'm just gathering together to put them in through the degreaser and uh, then into the ultrasonic cleaner and when they come back from that they are shiny and new or well, they look shiny and new shiny and new they might shiny and new looking they might still be quite worn that spring popped off there it is two screws here the one on this side the shoulder screw supports the shutter cocking rack as it moves backwards and forwards keeps it in contact with the gear on the top of the film advance shaft on the other side here we have the ratchet mechanism which stops the film advance shaft from backing up at the base of the camera I've got to take this cover off These screws are often fairly well obscured and disguised by the glue that's on this plate. It's helpful if you know where you're going to find them. And the screw slots are often clogged up with dried glue, making it hard to get your screwdriver to engage. This one's not particularly bad. This trim plate is chromed brass. And all that black discoloring, discoloration that you see there is the remains of the adhesive. Why is that reluctant to come off? I think it's probably stuck there with glue. 
No, that's fairly good. That'll need cleaning too to get all that rubbish off it. Here is the lock lever. Here is the release lever. And the release lever has a spring on it which is there to keep it in firm contact with the cam on the bottom of the film advance so that it follows the action of the cam which acts as a ratchet and basically ensures that the film advance lever can only be moved in the advance direction until you reach the end of the film advance stroke and then the lever shifts on the cam and the lever can only be returned to the park position you cannot inch the film advance lever it has to be done in full strokes you can stop halfway in which case you're just leaving it quite vulnerable to damage with the lever sticking out but you cannot swing the lever halfway, let it return to the rest position and then have another go. It doesn't work. This screw holds the bracket which holds this transfer shaft in place. This transfer shaft carries the action of the shutter cocking rack through to the shutter at the front of the camera. Now I need a special pair of pliers and a new battery for this video camera.